Good morning, everyone. Um, it's been some time since I last spoke last, last, last year, I guess. Um, I want to express my gratitude to uh, Dr. Lee, as well as all the teachers and faculties and staffs for inviting me once more and for giving me this great opportunity uh, to the deliver sermon in English, which is very challenging for me. I'm losing my English communication skill, getting badly rusty. Um, so I actually I asked my son, okay, Sean, would you proofread my manuscript sermon? Uh, but I realized that Sean is too busy to you know, help me out. This is a week of a midterm. <laughs> but uh, Sean fixed my pronunciations. Oh, Dad, you are losing your R sound. <laughs> You are getting Korean. <laughs> That's right. Um, today's scripture reading um, is from. Okay, let me see. Let me read it. Then Moses answered, but suppose they do not believe me or listen to me, but say, The Lord did not appear to you. The Lord says, said to him, What is that in your hand? He said, a staff. And he said, throw it on the ground. So he threw the staff on the ground, and it became a snake. And Moses drew back from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hands and seize it by the tail. So he reached out his hand and grabbed it, and it became a step in his hand. Oops, not this time. Yep. Okay, uh, today I will be discussing well known biblical figure, so Moses. One day, the God appears to Moses and gave him a huge mission, which is very challenging, to lead Hebrew people out of harsh slavery in Egypt. But Moses finds himself deeply troubled and hesitant. Why? Why does he hesitate rather than rejoice at the God's call to this mission? The task that God has assigned him to deliver his people from peril in Egypt is very, very dangerous and perilous. Does anyone know how old Moses was when he received his commission from God? Is he 20s? Oh, you know, 80s. That's right. You're smart. What's your name? Brandon. Wow. <laughs> Impressive. That's right. He was 80 years old. At this age, typically at this age, you know, 80 years old people is looking to start on something new. At this age, most people seek a stable and peaceful life. However, God has taxed Moses, the elderly gentleman, Harabuji, with a huge mission that may seem overwhelming. So it's no wonder that God, I mean Moses, feels hesitant. It must have been extremely difficult for Moses to decide to leave behind his stable and comfortable life, start to start a new journey that was unsettling, risky, uncertain, and unpredictable. Furthermore, another reason. The Moses' hesitation was his lack of complete trust in his ability to fulfill God's mission. Let me read the first verse again. Okay. Then Moses answered, but suppose they do not believe me or listen to me, but say, the Lord did not appear to you. In other words, the people wouldn't listen to Moses. Why? 
because he sees himself as insignificant. He believes he lacks power. He believes he lacks intelligence and his bravery. He assumes nobody will listen to his word. In verse 10, he expresses a similar concern. Let me read. But Moses says, said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I have never been eloquent, sorry, eloquent, neither in the past nor even now that you have spoken to your servant. But I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. He says that I'm not a good speaker. I'm not good at persuading people, which is the most important, crucial qualities of the good leader. I simply lack that skill. As we see, the Moses lacks belief in himself, his character, and his abilities. He seems to see himself as just ordinary person, perhaps not even enough to be considered average. He doubted himself, he doubted his qualifications to carry out God's work. Moses lacked faith in his own capabilities. In a sense, Moses was a failed man. He lived as a prince of Egypt, how many years? For 40 years. But single mistake he made, the killing a man, or turned him into a vulgative, forcing him to become a shepherd to survive in the wilderness of Midian. He likely spent his life bitterly pondering his poor choices. But in the midst of his apparent failure, God came to him and gave him a mission. That's who God is. God doesn't seek out those who are successful, powerful, or highly intelligent. Instead, God approaches individuals like Moses those who are weak, those who are imperfect, those who are, have faced failures. And God uplifts them up and empowers them. Faced with the significant turning point in his life, Moses does not move forward confidently. It would have been challenging for him to let go of his familiar and stable life. He also had no faith in himself. To this Moses, God asked a question. Let me read verse 2. The Lord say, said to him, What is that in your hand? He said, A staff. Did God ask Moses? Because he was really curious about what he was holding in his hand. Probably not. For God likely already knew what Moses held. However, he still asked, what is that in your hand? And what he had in his hand is the staff, like this. The Moses had likely been using this staff since he fled to the wilderness of Midian and took up shepherding. It may serve him well <clears throat> in moving the sheep and defending them from the wild animals. And Moses aged and his legs weakened. The staff became even more crucial, aiding him in maintaining his balance and supporting his body. The Moses staff was very ordinary and everyday tool so common, so mundane, that it seems unremarkable. The step was nothing special, but for God, it was sufficient. Sufficient for what? 
for carrying out God's work, fulfilling God's mission, and liberating God's people from the bondage of Egyptian king. That single ordinary step was enough. It means that to carry out God's work, you don't require something grand or something powerful. What, God's, what Moses needed to deliver the Israelite people was not steel sword or specially made military weapon, but ordinary and everyday step that was sufficient for God. In other words, <clears throat> Moses did not need to transform himself into someone exceptional, talented, or highly qualified to fulfill God's work. He was enough just as he was, using his ordinary staff. The significance of the staff lies in the fact that God uses us as we are. We don't have to become someone extraordinary for God's work. The step is everyday tool and mundane object. And not only that, it also represents weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Young people in this 20s, 30s, 40s don't typically use the cane because they are strong, they are healthy. They don't need such support. However, as I said, and as you know, Moses was 80 years old. The fact that he lies on a cane indicates his lack of strength. The Moses is weak, and that's why he needs cane or staff. Who is Moses up against? His opponent, enemy, is Pharaoh of Egypt, the ruler of the greatest power of the time. The Pharaoh can command well-trained and experienced army, and Moses must contend with them. Yet, all God requires is Moses' staff, which ironically doesn't symbolize strength, but the weaknesses. God uses just ordinary staff, a tool used by the weak. The signif this signifies that God uses the weak and makes them strong. The staff is ordinary and an everyday object and symbol of the underdog. And we all know what Moses did with it. The Moses performs numerous miracles with this staff. With this staff, Moses struck the Nile River, turning its water to blood. He pointed at the Red Sea and the waters parted. And when he struck the rock with it, the water gushed forth. And Moses stand on the top of the mountains with this staff. He led Israel people to victory. This staff initially a symbol of weaknesses, transformed into the tool of unmatched power. Moses can do anything with this step. But how is that possible? This step itself is nothing. But because God used it, uses it, Moses was able to do such amazing things. It happened because God used that step in Moses' hand. Exodus 4, chapter 4, 20 says, Moses carries, carried the step of God in his hand. Whose step was Moses holding? The Moses' step? No, it was the step of God. God transformed Moses' ordinary step into the mighty step of God. God comes to us. God calls us. God wants to use us. But we feel weak. 
We don't believe we are ready. We don't believe we are qualified. We don't believe we are capable. We view ourselves as sometimes failures. So when God comes to us, we may turn away. When he calls us, we may cover our ears. When we reach out, we may hesitate to take his hand. But God asks us the same question he asked Moses. What's that in your hand? What do you hold? What is your staff? Even if it is something ordinary, it's something insignificant, or a symbol of your weaknesses is enough. When God used that humble staff, it will be a staff of power. It will be become a staff of a power, staff of a authority, staff of a, the means to carry out his work. Getting back to the task, God tells Moses to do his staff on the ground and it transformed into a snake. So Moses was frightened, but he was told to grab the snake by its tail. The Moses reached out and grabs the tail and snake became, becomes a step again. God transforms Moses' step into a snake. Why did God choose the snake rather than turning it into a powerful weapon. Why a snake? What's the significance of a snake? In the eyes of Egyptians, snake wasn't just a creepy creature. They symbolized divine authority and kingship. Look at this image. Whose picture is this? It's an image of Egyptian pharaoh. The pharaoh is wearing crown with a cobra or snake on it. As we see, the snake represent, represented authority and power of a pharaoh and the Egyptian government that Moses was confronting. God tells Moses to seize the snake but he tells him to grab a specific part of it, the tail. Uh, this is snake is so cute. <laughs> now, normally, to handle the snake safely, people would seize it by the head, not the tail. By grabbing the head, the snake cannot bite. However, what happens if you grab the tail? you much more likely get beaten. But God commands Moses to take hold of a snake by its tail, not his head. The Moses having likely encountered numerous snakes in the wilderness of Midian and understood well it was safe to handle, handle them. Despite this, he follows God's commands and grab the snake by the tail. Then we transform back into the staff. The human knowledge, human experience, and human common sense would be grab the head of a snake. But God asked for the opposite. God was going to use Moses' staff as the step of God, not as ordinary step, but as manifestation of extraordinary power. However, there was one thing God expected of Moses, radical faith and trust in God. It goes against common sense and experience to grab a snake by the tail, but Moses, the obedience to God, follows through. Without such faith, this action would <clears throat> would have seems impossible. At times, God, God calls us to actions to surpass our understanding, experience, and common sense. 
Our common sense word experience is to do, to do this, but God says to do that. Our common sense is to hate our enemies, but God commands us to love them. Our experience is to teach us to seek power for influence, but God tells us to be humble. Like Moses, God invites us to grab the snake by the tail and have absolute trust in him. We are almost done. Let me summarize. God's specialty is uplifting the weak and using them. So Moses is one of those examples. Just as God asked Moses, God asks us, what is it that you have in your hand? It doesn't matter if we what we hold is ordinary, weak, and insignificant, like Moses' staff. We are to present it to God for his use. Then he will use our staff as the staff of God. The only condition for our staff to become God's staff is to take the snake by the tail. In other words, we must show our absolute faith in God and obey Him, even when it contradicts our common sense, knowledge, and experience. Then it will that then it is that God will walk through our step for His works. Okay, let us pray.